it's important you understand this we're not here just to gist and wear and while away time we're not just here to spectate and clap for others we are here determined to receive personally god has a program for everyone god has a package for everyone even at a very strategic service like this but whether or not you will receive your portion is up to you and my assignment is to be like a prophetic midwife to guide your faith to stir up your heart as we brace up to receive that which the lord has for us hallelujah you know by now that supernatural solutions and supernatural answers of all kinds do not just appear in the life of a believer they are provoked by engaging specific kingdom keys let me say that again supernatural solutions supernatural answers do not just appear because of desire they are provoked they are provoked by engaging specific kingdom keys there are keys that are allocated to answers that means that just because you want to be healed just because you want to be delivered just because you are tired of a current situation does not guarantee that you will find answers does not guarantee that you will find solutions in fact surprisingly so just because god is in the midst of his people does not guarantee that you will walk away with answers there were many people who came to jesus's crusades unfortunately the bible does not record that every one of them walked with their solutions and their desires met there were people who walked away not being healed there are times the bible will say he healed them all i used to think he healed all those who were in the crusade ground but he healed all those who came to him and all those who were interested in getting his power to their lives hallelujah you can be in a place where the healing anointing is flowing like a river where graces are flowing like a river where the power to deliver is flowing like a river and it never gets to you because the assignment of the river is to flow the assignment of the one who is thirsty is to know how to tap into the flowing river are we together now the well does not come to your house the assignment of the well is to always have water your assignment is to take that initiative and fetch your portion enough the well does not complain no matter how much you fetch provided you get there and take the responsibility it says with joy shall you you not god draw from the wells of salvation there are abundant riches that the wells of salvation carry are we together the word salvation is the word soteria also expressed as the word sozo when it has to do with healing and vitality and wholeness so deliverance is part of salvation breakthrough is part of salvation any and everything that upgrades you to manifest the god life in experience they are found within that well of salvation but whether or not you will enjoy it it does not depend on the well it depends on your ability to cooperate with god and fetch your portion Jesus met a woman at the well. The well was not in her house. She had to leave her house and she got to the well, took initiative, and while she was fetching, Jesus came and had that encounter with her. I'm saying this because most times, believers just think that because you are in the presence of God, that is all there is to do as far as receiving from God is concerned. Being in the presence of God gives you access to his power, access to his wisdom access to angelic activities but it does not mean you will walk away with your testimony are we together so you must be prepared to engage appropriately and my assignment tonight as always is to guide you i will not leave you in limbo as to what to do there is always an instruction connected to every miracle service our assignment is through prayer through alignment to receive the instruction that God would have us obey as far as receiving what he has in store for us is concerned. So yours is to listen and engage. If you are here and you are sick and you are just hoping, well, let's see what happens. You will be surprised that we'll share the grace and you'll walk away with no healing. You'll walk away with the curses, the yokes and everything there. So don't be distracted. Have this at the back of your mind already that there is a responsibility component to my receiving. 
Did you get that? There is a responsibility component to my receiving. And the first responsibility is to listen. The first responsibility is the hearing of faith. If you cannot hear, you are not even aware of what God wants to do. The Bible says they came to him to hear and to be healed. To hear and to be healed. Hearing exposes you to all the varieties, the miracles, the things that God can do, the things that he wants to do. Then you connect by faith. Are you ready now? So that you do not waste your moment, you do not waste this Kairos prophetic moment. I truly believe with all my heart that tonight is a very Kairos moment for someone. That you came by the Spirit so that there be a deposit upon your head, upon your life, that God will redefine your possibilities and may that be your portion in Jesus' name. I'm only speaking to one who has faith to believe. May that be your portion in Jesus' name. Amen. God is still in the business of setting the captives free. God is still in the business of liberating the oppressed. God is still in the business of healing the sick and healing the brokenhearted. God is still in the business of restoring things, restoring time, restoring relationships. Is someone learning now? God is still in the business of empowering destinies supernaturally, placing graces upon destinies, placing anointings upon destinies, opening up doors, revealing people, bringing them to their prophetic season. He did not stop. He's never stopped. He's still in the business of setting the captives free. He has never stopped. He still is in the business of liberating people, opening up closed doors, prison doors. God is still in the business of answering the questions that have plagued men and families. Questions like, will this ever end? Answer, surely there is an end. Surely. He didn't just say there is an end. He says, surely, certainly there is an end. That means reproach can end. That means shame can end. Is someone hearing me? That means delay can end. That means stagnation can end. God is in the business of ending everything that is not of God. I like what the Bible says, that the later part of Job's life, if you never read Job chapter 42, you will hate the story of Job. It will portray a very bad picture of God. But I like 42 and verse 10. The Bible says, God turned again. He restored. He turned again the captivity of Job. He turned again the captivity of Job. He's turning again the captivity of someone in the name of Jesus Christ. The Bible says, turn again our captivity like the streams of the south or the streams of the Negev. It is possible to sow in tears today, but it is also possible to reap in joy. God is still in the business of changing destinies. God is still in the business of opening new chapters. A new chapter means new story. A new chapter means yesterday is gone forever. Are we together? Yes. The beauty of a movie is that it is progressive. There is no movie that has one scene forever. That is not even a movie in the first place. Your, no matter what bad happens within a movie, your consolation is that there are other scenarios programmed that will be consoling. Are we together? The beauty of a book is that there are other chapters that you have not read. So no matter how bad the current chapter you are reading is the consolation. And sometimes when you are too afraid, you go back and check the name of the book. The name of the book gives you an idea of how the book ends. If you are reading a book that says season of victory and you are reading and you are in a page where there is chaos and darkness and gloominess, you find consolation that the name has already predicted the end. You take what the enemy meant for evil and you turn it for good. You turn it for good. That's someone's testimony. You take what the enemy meant for evil and you turn it for good. You turn it for good. You take what the enemy meant for evil and you turn it for good. 
of giving new body organs, new body parts. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Hmm. Destroy it not, for there is a blessing in it. God is still in the business of opening career doors. The matters that affect life and godliness. God is not just interested in the matters of godliness. The matters of godliness talks of spirituality. You're knowing God. You're growing spiritually. The health of your prayer life. But there are matters that pertain to life. Your children's school fees. Matters that pertain to life. Your promotion. God is benevolent enough to spread his power. To cover solutions across all grounds. Don't just focus on receiving answers to the matters of spirituality and godliness and leave the matters that pertain unto life. The Bible says, according as his divine power has given us all things that pertain unto life and godliness. Life and godliness. That whilst you are loving Jesus, serving him, your spiritual life on fire, your prayer life on fire. He's also sorting your finances, opening doors for you, taking away shame. You are a better portrait of a Christian when the matters of life and godliness are sorted. You believe that? Shout amen. amen. So there are many believers who feel guilty opening up their hearts to receive answers as pertaining matters of life. Because somehow we have indoctrinated ourselves that when you start crying for things, I know that our, our work with God should not just be based on things. But God is a benevolent father. And I have taught you the character of fatherhood is that you want to see your children happy. If you being evil, know how to give good gifts. God does not give bad gifts. Good gifts. There are people who already have money. There are people who have the matters of life sorted. Their children are doing well. Are we together? Their lives, their corporations are doing well. Their major problem are the matters that deal with godliness. They are prospering. Everything is working well. They are like the rich fool for want of word. As far as the matters of life is concerned by God's grace, they are sorted. But it is at the expense of their spiritual life, their prayer life, their love for God. You are welcome to this miracle service because God can bring that balance. He can plant a fire that you should not just be a prosperous unbeliever, an intelligent unbeliever. You can encounter God. He can sort your prayer life. He can sort your word life. Are we together? He can plant something upon you. Fire for the things of God. That brings balance. You become a better portrait of a Christian when that happens. But let me tell you the truth. For most people, especially most people gathered here tonight, Fairly so, we have done well as far as pressing for spirituality is concerned. Most people here, I presume, and I'm safe to do so, that you are doing well spiritually. You love God. There's always room for more. Most people love God. They don't have a problem fasting. They don't have a problem praying. They don't have a problem studying the word of God. They don't have a problem with the house of God. But the spirituality is being greatly interrupted because there are many things as far as the matters of life are concerned. House rent or house. Children's school fees. Huh? A vehicle, mobility, food. And let me tell you the truth, a responsible God and a responsible ministry must stretch to allow the power of God attend to the needs of people on both sides. Are we together? Yes. You will never have your spiritual life robust and healthy and then I do not care whether your children are doing well, whether you are making progress, whether you are being promoted. You are 20 years in a corporation. You are not promoted. It is, it is God is concerned and I am concerned too. And in the name of Jesus, there has to be an answer over that situation tonight. The Bible says, He that told you have asked for nothing. He says, ask and you shall receive that your joy may be full. 
joy may be full genesis 21 and verse 1 now abraham was old and well stricken in age and the bible says oh genesis 24 verse 1 my apologies abraham was old and well stricken in age and the bible says the lord had blessed him in how many things all things all things all things the matters of life and the matters of godliness i'm saying this to prime your faith so that you don't just choose one you can open your heart for all lord as you're causing me to love you let my finances also give me room to worship you well so that my worship is not cut short by worries you take what the enemy meant for evil you turn it for good you turn it for good you take what the enemy meant for evil and you turn it for good you turn it for good I'll share with you a few kids now i will give you four of them and then we begin to pray and please be sensitive whilst we receive these keys because the bible says and as he taught them the power of god was present to heal I want you to be determined tonight in the name of Jesus Christ that you will walk away out of this place with a spiritual souvenir yeah. that it must be evident. You know how you go for a wedding or a birthday party and then you pick your own. Only that you don't need to fight over anything. Your own has, has your name on it. So it's not like it's kept there and then you come and fight yourself. You know how people do it at weddings. You carry this, hide this, then put your own, then put the extra food. No. This one has your name. So anybody that carries it, you can tell him, no, it is El Shaddai serving. I've taught you about El Shaddai. El Shaddai means the multi-breasted one. That means he does not have to victimize you to bless me. He can bless all of us and he's still sufficient. There are times that when you are serving, some people will have to wait until you are done serving others. Then you come to them, not El Shaddai. At once, he visits everybody. He can give someone outside a testimony, someone within the overflow testimony, someone connected from across the globe. At the same time, this is what makes him the Shaddai. And in the name of Jesus, may he move over us. Amen. Shout a believers, amen. amen. Number one, the first key is a reminder. Then we'll build on the remaining three keys. The first key to really receiving from God at a service like this is to learn, and I've said it here, but let it be a reminder, a reminder tonight that all lasting help comes from God and God alone. You will think this is very simple, but it's a reason why many people do not receive. All lasting help. I didn't say all help. All lasting help. Satan can simulate a semblance of help. Men can try to be your source. And quite honestly, they can seem to provide some help and succor momentarily. But all lasting help, that means all lasting healing, all lasting deliverance, all lasting breakthroughs comes from God and God alone. Psalm 121 verse 1. God and God alone. God and God alone. I will lift up my eyes unto the hill from whence cometh my help. Verse 2. It says, my help cometh. My help cometh. My help will not remain there. My help is on its way. My help cometh, but it comes from the Lord. It comes from the Lord. Someone shout from the Lord. It matters where the help comes from. Don't just say I've received help. Where did it come from? If that help came from a herbalist, you are still in trouble. If that help came from men, you are still in trouble. If it came through men, it was correct. If it came from men, through men means they were channels. From men means they are the source. Every source that is not God is limited. It dries. Every source, I don't care the arrogance of the source. If it is not God, it will dry eventually. And sometimes it will dry just when you need it most. That's why the Bible says, vain is the help of man. God moves through men, but help does not come from men. Learn this. God moves through men, but help, lasting help, lasting help comes from God and God alone. Is someone hearing? Very important. In Psalm 60, 11, 
and 12. Psalm 60, 11 and 12. Give us help from trouble. Shout amen. amen. For vain is the help of man. Verse 12. It says, through God we shall do valiantly. For it is he that shall tread down our enemies. I'm telling you sincerely. And I'm saying this from the knowledge of scripture. The privilege of mentorship and experience. Lasting help comes from God. Let no man claim to do for you what only God can do. Even if they are sincere, they are still liars. Men do not lie because they are bad. They lie because they are limited. They do not have the wherewithal to keep their word true indefinitely. Integrity is a product of power, not just intention. It takes power to remain true for a long time. So there are many people who will promise you, if you are in trouble, just come to me. They are sincere, but they are liars. Because they also derive their help from someone. The person who helps, the person who wants to help you, if he does not help him, have you come to someone who said, I, I, I sat, last week when I spoke, I was still a commissioner. But unfortunately, I didn't know that in two days, they will remove me. So that thing I said I would do for you, I am sorry. With respect to performance, he's a liar. Not because he's bad, but he does not have the wherewithal. It is only God that has the power to keep his word for a long time. So when it looks like you're a person of integrity, it's because you have derived that strength from him. Are we together? All lasting help comes from God. Let no man fool you. I know that many of us here have uncles and aunties and bosses and superiors and spouses and children and parents, various men in our lives who have the means for now that we see and we desire. And many of us are hoping that as I pray, I will call their names and force them to come to you. I'm sorry to disappoint you. They will still help. But take your eyes away from any man and look unto Jesus. The Bible said, looking unto Jesus. When you look unto Jesus, give him the liberty of selecting who helps you. When you don't have expectation from men, there is no disappointment. Disappointment is when you expect uncle a and uncle b and uncle c will be the person if uncle a gives me five million uncle b gives me five million uncle c gives me five million that's 15 million father give this man no rest and god says i don't work that way the whole 15 million is coming from uncle z who you do not even know that one comes by my power and i do it in a way to glorify my name in your life and help the other people know that if you refuse to partner with god he still has other men the reason why many people cannot give God glory is because they have begged men too much to pretend it was God that blessed them. They have begged and begged in secret. They have rolled and bowed to Baal. When they get the testimony, they quote it with church talk and they come and say, see what God has done. It's a lie. When God does a thing, it becomes clear that this one, it is true that he walks through men, but it becomes the, the character of the testimony is such that you will see the hand of God there. May that be your kind of testimony. I'm saying this because some of you, the reason why you will never really receive is because there is a text currently in your phone. See me tomorrow. That's what the man said. So when I say receive favor, it doesn't make sense. There is see me tomorrow. Don't allow your pain teach you who men are. He said, I lay me down and I wait because the Lord sustained me. Is it not when your helper is alive that he can help you? I'm not, I'm not wishing doom. But go on and find out from people who had every evidence. The contract was already signed. It was one more signature left. They started collecting loans by faith with joy in advance. Yet they were disappointed. I made up my mind as a person I would never look to any man. Never in my life. God will use men and I will honor the men that he uses. But I will never look to any man. Are you learning koinonia? Don't delete the text. Leave it there. Because some of you now don't know what to do with the text. Just leave it there. God can still use the man. But let it be from God. That from God factor matters to God. Oh 
come and tell lies and say God just showed up whereas many of us I mean you you fraternize left and right with Babylon and then when the answer came you now take if his finances you may just take small and bring us a bribe no when God moves it becomes clear that this one is the signature of God oh my season has come oh, 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 oh my help has come oh, 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 oh my lifting has come oh, oh, oh Shout it, say after me, Father, my eyes are on you. Listen, mean it from your heart. If it takes you closing your eyes to say that, by this is a deliverance service. Some of you is why everything God said from January till now has not happened. You can do anything because you want to receive help from men. It is amazing what believers do in the secret and then they come to church and say this is what God did it's a lie when God moves it is clear that this one is God say it again say father, father. my eyes are on you shout it say father. father my eyes are on you turn it into a prayer in one minute my eyes are on you for my children my eyes are on you for this ministry I cannot rise by my strength my eyes are on you for the next season my eyes are on you for my finances my eyes are on you for the performance of your word you will use men but may it never come from men you will use men as vehicles as channels but never my source somebody pray this is your miracle service already they looked unto him and their faces were lightened they looked unto him and their faces were lightened they looked unto him and their faces were lightened stop frustrating yourself looking unto men god will use men when he uses the men acknowledge them and honor them but let it be God leading the men to help you not you manipulating your way through the life and the spaces of men that is idolatry in Jesus name we pray this is a very powerful revelation with all due respect you are a man of God stop looking on to men no I'm looking on to this person, this person, help, no, no. They looked on to him. When you look on to Jesus, genuinely, it was God's servant that said, God told him, can you look up and look down at the same time? He said, every time you are looking on to men, never claim you are looking on to me. It is true. And it's a human thing to want to look on to men. Because why look up to God who looks far when there is a man who has it close to you? But as close as you are, look at me. Have you tried to send a text to someone who is close to you? And yet that text did not arrive early. The person is close to you. Your phones are even together. You press send and then it did not go early. And somebody from somewhere sent an email and it even arrived before your text. They call it network problem. Am I right on that? So just because someone is close to you does not guarantee that he will be God over your life and then you succeed. It is when God puts it in their heart, then proximity becomes valuable when God is in the equation. Please help those under the anointing. Proximity, listen carefully, becomes valuable when God is in the equation. If you tear a zinc and bring someone who is sick and Jesus is not there, there are many troubles you have caused. You will fix that zinc. You will suffer from many people and return back disappointed. Proximity is only valuable to men when the God of the Bible is there. But I tell you for as many who will choose to look unto Jesus tonight, my God will surprise you. Yeah. Hallelujah. I have met extraordinary miracles and manifestations of God's grace and help in my life from unexpected sources 
if I were given the liberty of designing the arrival of my blessings, I would fail woefully. Did you hear what I said? If I was given the liberty by God, that means if God said, my son, as, as my love for you, choose how you want your blessings to come, I would have frustrated my own growth myself. Because it's when the blessings arrive, you will see the wisdom that brought them, that you never would have imagined how it would have come. They looked unto him. Is someone learning? Please sit down. This is how God delivers people in a miracle service. You hear this one word now, you can go back and return. For some of you, when you return home, you take some five minutes to repent. I have made you too small in my eyes, oh Lord. Forgive me. And I have believed in a lie that you are unable to help me. But now, oh Lord, I see my wrong. Heal my heart and show yourself strong. And in my heart and with my song, oh Lord, be magnified oh Lord be magnified that's your own miracle service who told you God cannot give you a house who told you God cannot pay rent you are calculating what is in your account unfortunately it doesn't work that way who told you God cannot give you visibility who told you God cannot sort the shame? You are owing. You are not the first to owe. You remain thinking like that. That debt would depress you. There are people who have owed to the billions of dollars God brought them out. Shake away that doubt and believe God tonight. Apostles, because you don't know my problem, let me tell you the truth. I submit to you not to insult your pain, but there is nothing happening to you that is happening for the first time. The Bible says the thing that is, is the thing that was. And it's the thing that is to come. The things that are written aforetime, the pain that was written aforetime, the limitations, the defeats, the weakness written aforetime is for our learning so that we, through patience and comfort of Scripture, might find hope. Be magnified, O oh Lord. You are highly exalted And there is nothing you can do Oh Lord, my eyes are on you Be magnified Oh Lord, be magnified God for you when he takes the stage and begins to lead you you will watch with wonder your own life then you will know that he's the one leading you and you will see the glory that comes out of such a life it becomes clear that this one bar is the hand of God I don't know why I'm staying here to press it this I, this is what God wants to deliver someone from unbelief the truth is we don't trust God. We think we do. It's a lie. We trust rich people. Huh? We trust gatekeepers. And it will flow through them. Don't get me wrong. But I'm saying the dynamics is always from God. If you miss that, you have turned into idolatry. Affect my life. Breathe on me. I look to you for life affect my life breathe on me I look to you for life affect my life breathe on me Lord I look to you for life affect my life for someone you came to church tonight to repent from idolatry you have pinned your uncle's picture everywhere in your house. Shouting day and night. This man will not sleep. You are joking. God is not that wicked. The man is praying over his own life. Give me sleep. And you are in your room praying and say he should not sleep. If you were God, which one will you answer? 
the man is asking God, you are my lifter, give me sleep. And someone else who should be looking on to Jesus, you are looking on to the man and say, God, wake that man, he will not sleep. Abba, look on to Jesus. I'm telling you, God is speaking to someone here. Apostle, there's this contract, so there's this senator. His things are already working. Let me advise you, my dear businessman, I don't mean to insult your experience. Drop that phone contact. Drop your contract on the ground and say, Lord, if you do not help me, help cannot come from anywhere. And watch the God of heaven. You see, this is what makes men, is what leads to human worship. Because when you show men, if you don't help me, I'm dead. It's a lie. It's an insult on the power of God. It's the reason why when the miracles happen tomorrow, they look at you, they say, I made you who you are. And if you don't bow to me this way, I will punish you. But not God. When God lifts you, you have peace. You owe every man thanks, not worship. When God lifts you, you owe the men he used thanks. And then you owe the God who used them worship. But when men become both your source and the vehicle, they don't want thanksgiving alone. They want worship. Are you getting how it works now? When God becomes your source, then the only thing you owe men is deep honor and gratitude and never fail to do that. But when men become your source and the only thing you come and tell them is thank you, they say you are joking. Thank you for what? For being God? No, you don't thank God alone. You worship God. And if a man becomes your God, then you are forced to both thank and worship him. May I never worship any man. Yeah. The three Hebrew boys told Nebuchadnezzar, he said, oh king, matter of honor we will give you honor matter of gratitude gratitude but when you come to the realm of worship you have touched an area that is beyond your jurisdiction our god can deliver us is someone learning number two let's hurry up do you know this already is someone's is someone's miracle this is what you came to church to learn Let God choose the men that help you. You can honestly talk to him. Lord, I know you can use this man. However, let your will be done. And God will say, because you trust me enough to use both the men you know and the ones who do not, you do not know. If Abraham were to choose the person who will prosper him, he will not choose Abimelech. But it was Abimelech God used to give him great gifts. Two, what is the second key? Let me recap that number one, you must know and burn it at the back of your heart that all lasting help comes from God and God alone. From God and God alone. Number two, you want to receive from God, especially at a miracle service like this, you must have defined expectations. Defined expectations. Faith is vision dependent. Faith, you can't believe God for nothing. You can't believe God for vague things. Faith is vision dependent. You must have defined expectations. Don't just have expectations. They must be defined. Matthew chapter 6 and verse 11. Give us this day our daily bread. Give us this day, Matthew 6, 10. Our, or 6, 11. Our daily bread. Give us this day our daily bread. Lord, this is what I'm trusting you for. Daily bread. Daily bread. Daily bread. Most believers come to God and you will be surprised. And I say this with all due respect. How many believers are here gathered and the men is scattering, you know, scattered ab ab abroad, following online who are watching. You ask them, what are you trusting God to do for you? They say, well, I'm just connected to a miracle service. I, I like this man of God. He's about to pray. Let's just release our faith. But what do you want God to do for you? He came to blind Bartimaeus and he said, what do I do for you? Blind Bartimaeus said that I may receive my sight. If blind Bartimaeus said I was hungry, perhaps he would have just given him something to eat. Defined expectation. Father, heal my son from autism. Find expectation. Lord, I am trusting you for a good job. 
a job that is able to pay me this much so that I can do this for my family. Defined expectation. Give me a man child. Defined expectation. Lord, I'm trusting you. I'm releasing my faith for a house. Defined expectation. God, give me anything you want to. Mm -mm, mm -mm. That's not how. It looks very sincere. But the, the theology of receiving from God demands defined expectations. Are we together? What do you trust God for? Father and anointing, the spirit of wisdom. This is what I'm trusting to rest upon my life. I'm trusting that favor will rest upon my life. Oh, so that when it comes, you will know it has arrived. Are we together now? Yes. Now, God can surpass your expectations. In fact, he will. But the ladder that gets to that surpassing is your defined expectation. What are you trusting God for? Lord, I'm trusting you to overturn a verdict. I'm trusting you to bring me healing. I've been diagnosed of cancer, stage two, stage three, stage four. Don't just say heal me. Of what? At least the doctor, medicine has helped you. You've zoomed down what the problem is. If you do not know what the problem is, then that is fair enough. But when you know, you mention it. It's the reason why we guide people by helping them to tabulate their expectations. It's not a ritual. It's to be able to guide you so that you methodically pen down using your own hands, engaging your own faith. And I pray for someone here that everything you came here genuinely believing God for, honestly, may the God of all grace surprise you. So key number two, you must have defined expectations. Let's hurry up. Number three. The third requirement is that you must believe in the Lord your God and you must believe in the vessel that he will use to meet your need. You must believe in the Lord your God as your source, but you must believe in the vessel. If you believe God alone and don't believe in the vessel, you will not receive, surprisingly. The Bible demands that you believe in both God as your source and the vessel as the channel he will use to reach you. Believe in the Lord your God, so shall you be established. Second Chronicles 20, 20. Believe also his prophets, so shall you prosper. You don't believe in the vessels as your source, I have told you. But when it leaves the source, it needs a channel to you. There are times where from the water board, the dam, everything is fine. Water begins to flow there and then something happens and maybe there's a, a bust in a pipe. Do you know that an entire community, perhaps in Abuja here, can be without water? And when you call the water board, they say the problem is not from our end. Everything is fine. We've released water to get to every community. But for some reason, there was a pipe bust somewhere and some persons will suffer. But it is natural to blame the water board. But they will tell you, we will come to fix it. But it's not, our, it's, not, it's not from our end at all. That's how it is. Blessings can leave heaven. But when the, the vessel to deliver it to you does not have that capacity, or you're not believing in that vessel, it affects the delivery. You must believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, but you must also believe in the vessel that he uses. Number four, the fourth and final key for tonight to prime your faith as we release ourselves into what God intends to give us tonight is you must take actions of faith. You must take actions of faith, actions of obedience. So God would have done his part being the source. The vessel would have done his part being a worthy channel. But the final recipient must do his own part by receiving by faith. If you do not receive, it will stop that flow. I can give you something and you can reject it. As many as received him, even to them that believe on his name, he gave them power. That means not everybody received him, but as many as received him. As 1.8, he shall receive power. Anything to be received can be rejected. 
you shall receive healing you shall receive breakthrough you shall receive open doors you shall receive meaning you can reject it if you don't know how to receive for everyone that asketh receiveth how do you receive by faith by complying with prophetic instructions if an instruction comes to shout by faith it is not mere gibberish it's not playing on your intelligence no Oh, check yourself. Do what you couldn't do before. You don't say, well, the pain is still there. No, you act. The Bible says, Peter and John told the man, such as I have, give I unto you. In the name of Jesus, rise up and walk. And the man was still watching there. Do you know if they left that man there, he would have remained crippled forever. The Bible said, Peter reached him and carried him up. Corresponding actions of faith. If you are an unsaved person, you've not encountered Jesus and it's the time for the altar call and you hear the message so nicely and you say, wow, I love the way this man introduces Jesus and you don't come out to actually make that decision. You will still go back home unsaved. The miracle always happens at the point of obedience. Someone say actions of faith. One more time, say actions of faith. From checking yourself to receiving by faith, believing, to going to perhaps you are coming here let's say high blood pressure the medical stand they are there and able and ready while the word of god is coming if you believe that word is for you and you are suffering from bp and you just sit down you're smiling i mean what's the distance between you and the medical stand you go there and tell them i've been prayed for they are people of faith they are not just doctors they are not just professionals they've been trained to believe god they have watched miracles happen right there in their presence oh i came here with hiv and prayer has come now you go and check not every miracle sadly may be verified immediately because there are other miracles that require medical tests but do you do it most believers don't do it apostle my own is bp to not uh, they've stopped you from eating everything because of bp it's almost as if the only thing you take now is water and god wants to liberate you now the prayer comes fire comes from heaven take a step of faith and go and check it if you sit back there and say well i think I'm, I'm really feeling nice you may not be healed you may not be healed you need to take that step i'm feeling a pain it's, it's an excruciating pain or there's a kneecap something they've told me i'll do a surgery in the name of jesus god is visiting us the man of god is ministering now he says check yourself by faith do i do so at the point of releasing your faith you see that the power of god flows are we together oh i don't hear very well i'm blind on both eyes or blind on one eyes don't sit down and say will it happen i know it happened for so 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 and so you may be in a situation like our dear sister who shared you see that now after the word of god comes you go and check yourself at the convenience meet the medical doctors when a genuine miracle happens it does not conflict with medicine are we together now the doctors will confirm it you will know you have been touched you will feel you have been touched you will check your hands you see that the miracle has happened and it doesn't matter whether you are in here all the overflows or outside or online you hear the, the story of the gentleman who had the you know the growth there you would think because he's in abuja here he'll be healed in abuja with all due respect only god knows that the word of god had been coming but perhaps he did not engage as should be so God decided to route it through Canada. The most important thing is that the power of God got to him. May God not route yours through Canada. May God not route yours through UK. May God not have to route yours when you are watching a rebroadcast. That now that you are here, knowing the power of God is present to heal. Creator of the universe, what can you do? What can you do, Jesus? Creator of the universe, what can you change? What can you change, Jesus? Hallelujah. Apostle, mine is not sickness, I'm in debt. How do I respond? Let me tell you how to respond. Number one, I have taught you that all blessings come from God through men to men. Are we together? But that there is an anointing that has to come upon your head. Is that true? That causes the men to come. So your assignment right now, forget about which man will be used. Yours is to receive that grace. So by the time prophetic declarations are coming, if I were you, 
and I were in debt. Let me tell you how. I will open up my heart. When the word comes for your liberation, you receive it by faith and believe that something has rested upon my heart and you look with expectation. You may even verbalize it by faith that as I'm stepping out of koinonia here, that grace is guiding the right people to me, guiding me to the right people. You get back home, you take 30 minutes to soak that anointing to your spirit. Lord, I have received from your servant. I came for a miracle service. In the name of Jesus, let my Monday be an unusual Monday. I'm showing you how to engage the word. Don't just get home and say, Kai, koinonia was powerful. Oh. How about you? How was it? nice and that's it you see why it doesn't work you force it to work you provoke it to work by engaging Apostle, so what do i do with my landlord now i'm supposed to see him by 10 a.m tomorrow let me tell you what to do forget about your landlord now and look unto jesus because even if you don't forget about him you are still in that trouble and it's only god that will bring you out am i right on that so you you keep your gaze you really think God cannot speak to someone to help you and the person does not need to know you are in debt. Not everybody is greedy. There are people who are obedient. When God speaks to them, they obey. It's only that he has not asked them to bless you yet because there's something about your attitude that it has not released his power. There are people if God speaks to them, even if it's 100 million, I tell you they will obey in an instant. How many minutes does it take for an alert to get to your phone? The problem most times is we allow the mountain to cover the face of God. So we cannot even see him again. All we see is the mountain. Apostle, I don't have a job. That's my one problem. I'm trusting you to give me a job. Let me tell you what to do. As the word of God comes, whether you came here with your CV or not, it doesn't matter. Lord, in the name of Jesus, I know that there is a portion for me. God is a God of portions. I have taught you that the increase of the field is for all. And even the king is fed from that which comes from the field. That means if you are in Christ and you are an inhabitant upon the earth, there is a portion for you. But it is God who gives men their portion. They don't find it by themselves. No. So your prayer for a job will not be, oh God, give me a job. There is always something for you. It is that God will give you speed and bring it to you. Help, help that gentleman running there. Speed. Are we learning now? Apostle, I am a man of God and in, I love God. Walking in integrity, I love Jesus with all my heart. But ministry is not working. Let me tell you the thing. Three things I'm, I'm missing. I will tell you with all humility. Crash course, ministry 101. The first thing missing is wisdom. And wisdom is not just to execute and get an answer. There is a track record. People don't follow you till they trust you. Even if God calls them to work with you. They will watch you from afar until they believe you are worth their leadership. Nobody will come to you just because you are anointed. Heal everything you can heal. They will still watch from afar. Your consistency and that track record. You see that now? Jesus was not born on the day men started looking for him. He had been born years before, but his consistency, a day came, it's called the season of appearing. Is God helping someone? I wish I could simulate different problems and tell you how to solve them spiritually because most believers do not know how to engage by faith. Shouting amen is wonderful, but there is a portion of this receiving that is only you and God. Only you and God. Only you and God. Only you and God. Are we together? Apostle, me, I'm not sick. But the kind of demonic activities in my life, I will even choose sickness. Because the way I've been suffering, let me tell you the way out. That one even makes it easy. Huh? Because what you need to do is the hearing of faith. The power that takes away the influence of those demons from your life does not come from you. It comes from God. Your, your own is to believe that there is such a thing as demonic attacks and to believe that there is also such a thing as the victory of Christ. And the assignment of a miracle service like this is through the power of the prophetic to superimpose the victory that has been wrought in Christ experientially to be superimposed over your situation.
Just believing that without prayer, everything is gone. You will waste your time living in, 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 um, in, in deception. And the demons will be happy that you sustain that mindset. Nothing in the kingdom that comes from God actually arrives the believer's life without his engaging them. Not salvation, not healing, not deliverance. As free as salvation is, if you don't confess Jesus, you will still go to hell. So why will it be different from healing? Why will it be different from deliverance? The logic is the same. If you say Jesus is already saved, I mean Jesus has died. I don't believe I'm a sinner. Unfortunately, that's not how to be born again. You can live in that deception till you go to hell. But when you come, own up, I am a sinner, but I receive of the substitutionary sacrifice. Now that finished work becomes potent there and then in your life. Same thing with sickness. No inhabitant in Zion shall say, I am sick. But experientially, now we do not see all things yet under his feet. When you believe Jesus and you engage the principle that makes for healing, the hearing of faith and actions of obedience, that healing stream finished in Christ becomes a reality in your life now. Yes, he has been made the head over principalities and powers. You should not have any cause again in Christ. You are right. You should not have any demonic attack in Christ. But until that reality is engaged, it remains a finished reality from the spirit while demons oppress you every day and deceive you into believing you are all right. When you are all right, it becomes clear that you are all right. Are we learning? Every truth finished in Christ must be engaged by faith for the experience of that victory to be made manifest. The same grace that saved you is the same grace that prospered you. Why is your account not speaking it now? It does not mean the work is a lie. There is something to engage in partnership to make that experience happen. It's the same thing with deliverance. The same package brought everything. He was the son has eternal life. He who was the Son has eternal life. I have the Son, so I have eternal life. Has God helped someone tonight? So that when we rise to pray, you will be angry in your spirit. I will not go back the way I came. I may not know your problem, except some of them are revealed to me prophetically. But it doesn't matter the situation. You can be angry if he's healing you know what to do now you watch for the word i may not even have to mention your case maybe you are outside somewhere scattered at the the back end it doesn't matter once there is the hearing of faith maybe you are connected in a hospital you have nothing to lose you are not paying to receive so release your heart receive give god a chance you have given things of lesser value, lesser integrity a chance. Why don't you give the God of the Bible a chance? Can he make my life? Absolutely. Can he help me? Absolutely. Can he redefine my possibilities? Apostle, my own is that I have made foolish decisions in my life. As I'm seated right now, I don't even know where to start from. Let me tell you where to start from. Follow the pattern of the prodigal son. Come to yourself. Come to yourself. The prodigal son too did not know what to do. Come to yourself. Number two, allow yourself to be assisted. That's why God sent us here. When the prodigal son said to himself, I will arise and go. So when it's time to come and be saved, we connect you to the father. That's where you start from. Then the word of God comes and begins to culture your understanding. Your possibilities are a product of your mentality enhanced by demonic presence. So your deliverance will start by that healing of your spirit called salvation. Then a reorientation of your spiritual understanding through the word of God. That's how your deliverance happens holistically. Listen, when you understand the kingdom system, you will know that there is a way out of everything. There is a way out of everything. There is a way out of everything. I'm going to request that you lay your hands on your head. 
and for the next two or three minutes please cry from the depth of your heart lord i desire a testimony let it be clear that i met you tonight someone pray let it be clear that i met you tonight let it be clear that i met your power tonight let it be clear that your wisdom has rested upon me tonight let it be clear that you heal through my life i know you heal but lord give me an evidence a token tonight outside pray let it be clear through my life that you still anoint men let it be clear through my life that you still lift burdens let it be clear through my life that you still cause men to remember men let it be clear through my life that a book of remembrance can be opened a preacher pray a tired mother pray a tired father pray someone in debt pray 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 Pray. Someone tired of curses, tired of demonic operations, pray. You came here to receive. You came here to receive. Sali kapelando salakrafata malakata. Leprakata belegata paratos. Let it be clear through my life that you can place fire upon a man let it be clear through my life that your favor can speak in the life of a man let it be clear through my life that you restore let it be clear through my give me the experience of the world that i become a living epistle after this miracle service one more minute you are praying across the globe make sure you pray release your heart release your faith knowing that god is the only helper the only one who can help men longevity of help resides only with the god of the bible all lasting help comes from god and god alone number two you must have defined expectations i'm helping to give definition to your expectations number three you must believe in the lord and believe in his servant believe in the Lord and believe in the vessel that he will use number four be prepared to take actions of faith actions of obedience you're receiving the manifestation of God's promises is faith dependent insist I must walk away with a testimony a testimony of breakthrough the help of men deliverance rising lifting a job promotion fresh fire upon my destiny in Jesus name we pray in Jesus name we pray rise up on your feet now please Hello, him Adonai, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Hello, him Adonai, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Hello, him Adonai, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Hello, Are you ready to receive this is what a miracle service is about you are cultured by the word to know how to receive you will see how easy it is for the power of God to touch you because once faith is there now you understand what to do you make the assignment easy for the Holy Spirit to reach you and give you testimonies hallelujah I'm going to ask you to bring all those under the anointing will be very very fast very fast you're not shouting you're not doing anything the power of God is going to begin to move please let me have those people here it's not a deliverance happening to them there is a kind of impartation that God is bringing and I want you to bring them out I will pray deliverance shortly afterwards father in the name of Jesus as you're revealing this to me I'm praying that everyone I'm seeing like oil from a bottle just flowing 
on the ground. In the name of Jesus Christ, whoever must drink of that oil, that, that oil that sets you apart for some producing favor, for some rewriting your destiny, in the name of Jesus, please very quickly, let me have them out. Salimeneko Savraskabalatu Savratizilas. Inside this auditorium, outside, everywhere, I stretch my hands. I'm seeing oil by the power of the Holy Spirit. Let it rest on people right now. Let it flow to you. Let it flow to you. For someone is bringing ease to your life. You've gone through hardship. Hardship. This is what God is taking out of your life. This cause of hardship. This yoke of hardship. Cause of hardship. Yoke of hardship. The cause of hardship. There are families who have gone through this. In the name of Jesus, God is able to give men rest. I pray that this oil will flow to you right now. Outside, inside. Let it flow, let it flow, let it flow. By the power of the Holy Spirit, let it flow. In the name of Jesus Christ. You will be surprised at the things that begin to happen to you. Some of you, even from this service, right now, before the service is done, miracles, miracles, supernatural manifestations of God's power. Adonai. In the name of Jesus, I'm seeing stones. I believe this represents altars. I want to pray now. I'm seeing stones. In the name of Jesus, if there be anyone under the sound of my voice who is a victim of ancestry, activities of darkness, altars and yokes, manifesting in your dreams, stopping doors of favor, cutting short the ministry of helpers, you are going to shout the name Jesus and let that fire rest upon you and consume every altar. Are you ready at the count of three? One, two, three, shout Jesus. I curse every altar. I curse every altar in the name of Jesus by the blood, by the blood of the eternal covenant, by the blood of the eternal covenant. I arrest every spirit tying down lives. I arrest every spirit tying down families. You give way now in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm hearing the, the, the spirit of heaviness. There's a, there's a manifestation of that spirit in the Bible. Now you'll be given a garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. I don't know who that is, but an anointing is coming upon you. That spirit of heaviness manifesting as depression, manifest a parakoskiata, as suicidal thoughts. In the name of Jesus, now I declare, let it be broken, let it be broken, let it be broken, let it be broken. Now, the spirit of heaviness be loose from it right now. Hallelujah. I'm seeing the vision of a gentleman and others are walking forward. But what I'm seeing in my vision is you are walking backward. This is what I'm seeing. Not that you are looking back. You are walking back while others are going forward. This is what I see. You know, let me tell you, backwardness is a curse. Because the Bible says the path of the just is as a shining light. You can be backward in ministry, in I mean, progressive decline, if I will use that expression. That means there is no day 
that is ever better than the previous one. No. All your yesterdays are always better than your tomorrows. I want to cause that spirit right now. Anyone here, Jesus, the spirit of backwardness, responsible for retrogression, financial retrogression, responsible for ministry, responsible for the decline in families. I decree and declare, be delivered now. Be delivered now. Be delivered now. Be delivered now. Hear me. The Lord is saying I should tell someone, there is an explanation as to what killed your father. There is an explanation as to what killed your mother. There is an explanation as to what is killing the men in your family. I decree and declare any programming from hell that after every season somebody must die as a sacrifice, die by witchcraft or by accident. I decree and declare right now, let fire from heaven, my God, fall upon every altar, every altar fueling death, every altar fueling death, every altar fueling death. Be destroyed now in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. The Bible says, do not let your good be evil spoken of. The Lord wants to minister to someone. There is nothing good you do that is perceived as good. It's like there is a covering cast on you. And people always misinterpret what you do. Always, whether it's in the place of work, whether it's in the house of God, anything good you do, it is always misinterpreted. I pray for you. Every covering cast on anyone, misrepresenting you, making you look evil whereas you are good, making you look dishonest whereas you are honest. I tear that veil now. 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 Hallelujah. The Lord is speaking to me about someone. You are always afraid of good things because they never last. It's like there is a curse in your family. Nobody celebrates longevity of good things. If you rejoice over a job, Death will come and cancel the story. If you rejoice over a child that is born, another tragedy always comes to cancel what God is doing. I want to pray for that person. Not everybody, but there's someone here and that anointing will come upon you as I pray. In the name of Jesus, whatever makes evil to outlive good, whatever makes the testimony of God's faithfulness to die prematurely over your family, I come by this anointing and I come by this mantle right now. In the name of Jesus, be delivered now. Be delivered now. Did you bring a guitar? Please play the strings for me. Elato Savlia Kasha Brandigi Balato Skiata. You always return to your parents' homes after you marry. It's a spirit. Nobody stays successfully in marriage. It, something must happen. Either a quarrel with your spouse, either whatever it is. It's a demonic enchantment. In the name of Jesus, I'm praying for someone right now. Release your faith as I pray. There is a lady, I'm seeing you, you are from Edo State. This is what happens to your family. Nobody, either they get pregnant outside of wedlock or even if they make it to marriage, it's only as if they just went for an excursion, they return back. You are from Edo State. The power of God is touching you. Where is that lady? If, is there someone like that? You are from Edo State. This, this is what happens to your family. 
in the name that is above all names i pray for you by the power that raised christ from the dead where are you from at those states yes, how many are you in your family we are six six yes sir. are they married yes sir my my other sister have four children for four different men four children from yes, four sir. different men yes sir something will just happen and they will send her back home something will happen and the men oh she married four different men yes sir and had children and they sent her back yes, home sir. that's all right that's okay the bible says even the lawful captives don't be too quick to condemn people though. There are influences that move people, even the lawful captives. What God says to one, he says to all. I want to use this, my dear sister, as a point of contact. If there is any spirit that says you will not enjoy your home, that you will be there and be driven away like a fugitive in the name of Jesus and by the power of the Holy Spirit, that yoke is hereby broken. 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 Hallelujah. The Lord is showing me a lady. I don't know if it's you or your sister. You've had like three or four people die. Children. You give birth but they die. Either they come out a stillbirth or maybe some kind of premature experience. This is, this is children dying. If there's such a person, let me speak to you. Else we'll just continue. In the name that is above all names. It's a spirit. Either you give birth to a child and then the child dies. You see that? By the power that raised Christ from the dead, I decree and declare. Whatever eats up children to make sure that you don't deliver. Look up. The Bible says, I saw a mystery in heaven. And that mystery was a woman who was pregnant with a man child. She was about to give birth. And he said a dragon came from nowhere and stood. Just waiting for her to give birth so that she will eat the child. A child may mean a physical child. But a child may mean a vision. A child may mean anything that comes out of you. A product of your sacrifice and creativity. I pray for you. Every demonic thing waiting to eat up your sacrifice, your sweat and even physical children. By the blood of the eternal covenant, that agreement is hereby cancelled. That agreement with hell is hereby cancelled. That agreement with hell is hereby cancelled. That agreement with hell is hereby cancelled. I'm hearing a name, I believe that should be the northern part of Nigeria, Godia. Godia, that's Thanksgiving in Hausa. Who has that name? Godia. There is somebody with that name. I want to pray for you. Please make sure if that is not your name, don't worry. You can stay where you are and receive. I'm hearing the name Godia. Then I'm hearing the name Ephraim. 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 Who is that person? Ephraim. The Lord is saying rebuke the spirit of death. Ephraim. I'm hearing that name. Rebuke the spirit of death. There is a plot to take that person by hell. Ephraim. In the name of Jesus. If that is your name, Please, if it's not your name, just sit back where you are. And I'm not a prophet of doom. When God reveals, it is because he wants to redeem. Ephraim, in the name of Jesus, I want to pray for you. That no arrow will be fired into your body as mysterious sickness that the hospital cannot diagnose. And suddenly you wake up one morning and the man dies in the night. I pray for you. What's your name? I pray for you. What God says to one. You see, the thing about prophecy is not just about God isolating individuals at the mercy of others, at the um, expense of others. No. God only uses someone as a point of contact to announce many people's condition. Are we together now? So you receive by faith. Please, if you are not in the category that I called where house of order, make sure you stay back. Godia. Who is Godia? All of you? there is a woman here God wants to set you free you don't have to come out every time you take in a man comes to you in a dream to try to molest you 
and even while you are already once that happens you must lose the pregnancy it doesn't matter what happens you will find out you start seeing blood and that becomes the end of it i need to pray for you because it's a season you don't need to come out you are going to receive by faith this is something every time you get married it's like there is another husband and once that man shows up in the dream you must lose that child doesn't matter how many months of pregnancy you have it's a demonic programming the Bible says casting down every imagination and every high thing that exalts itself above the knowledge of Christ I'm still praying again I use this gentleman Ephraim I'm speaking by the influence of the spirit every death the plague of death by the cause of sickness mysterious sickness that cannot be diagnosed in the hospital and someone just keeps emaciating until you die looking like maybe HIV or something in the name of Jesus we cancel it now 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 I'm saying it by the anointing what killed your father will not kill you what killed your father will not kill you we speak life in the name of Jesus Go oh dear, I want to pray for you. Is there someone with a name like Asabe? That looks like a Muslim name. Huh? Your auntie, where are you from? I'm from Kaduna I'm State. I'm talking of somebody here. Well, I will pray for you, but Asabe, I'm going to pray for you. In the name of Jesus Christ, I decree and declare. I'm still hearing that name again. Asabe looks like a Muslim name. Or, well, sometimes Christians can, can have it too. Please verify so we don't have people. What is he coming out for? Your name is Asabe? Huh? Your mom? Okay, let him come. If, if it's his mom. Where is she? Meduguri? Plateau? Okay, no problem. You can come. When God reveals things like this, ladies and gentlemen, he's not wasting your time. And don't just focus on those who are in front. I'm saying it again. Prophecy uses an individual case as a point of contact. Are we together? It's the same grace that rests on someone. The Lord is showing me a lady. You never have profitable relationships. This is marriage relationships. You are a very beautiful lady. You love God. But the moment a man... And I'm seeing that a curse was pronounced by a man of God over your grandfather. This is what I'm seeing. A curse was pronounced by a man of God over your grandfather. That because of something he did to insult the name of Jesus, that it, it would be like, it's like a, a curse out of anger. I'm not a prophet of doom. God is solving issues here. If a man comes to you and says, I want to see your parents, that statement alone, something happens. Either his finances will go down or people will advise it against you. But I pray, let, let fire from heaven in the name of Jesus Christ. We pray mercy. Whatever made that cause to come upon your family and your bloodline by the blood of the eternal covenant, I cry mercy, mercy, mercy in the name of Jesus Christ. The Bible says, what is the lamb that was slain? He was already slain. You cannot suffer the consequences of what grandfathers or forefathers did. Therefore, let fire destroy that altar. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. They want to go and see your parents. And it looks like an embargo just comes. And you cannot even understand it character loving Jesus listen look at me believe me I don't mean to scare you but you must understand spirit transactions over the destinies of men otherwise if you fool yourself that life is only scientific or physical or sociological you will be cheated a thousand times hallelujah I want to pray for you, Asabe, in the name of Jesus. My sister, look at me, that lady, what do you do? 
I'm a lawyer, but I work in an NGO. An NGO. Where are you from? I'm from Adama State. Father, in the name of Jesus, look at me. I'm seeing that you, I don't know if you are doing it or you're going to start a business. This is what God will use to prosper you in a way. Huh? God will lift you. You know how God lifts somebody and uses the person to wipe the tears of their family members. I place grace upon you. Go and write it. Make sure you go through this prophetic word and act on it by faith. I don't know who God needs to raise like that. There will always be someone God will raise to wipe the tears of a family. It is God's intention to reach everybody, but it starts with one person. I'm praying for you, and an anointing is going to come on people now. If you are the one anointed to be the opener of ancient doors over your family, that a door that has refused to open, God is anointing you at this miracle service. You are carrying the mantle of a warrior. You are the one who will open that door ministerially, open that door financially, open that door maritally. Right now, receive that impartation. Receive that impartation. Receive that impartation. Receive that impartation. Whether male or female, I say it again. The grace that opens doors, that you are the first person that God will use to deliver your family from shame, from reproach. Let that grace rest on you now. In the name of Jesus. Now, let me pray for those in front so that they can go back to their seats for those who can. In the name of Jesus Christ, I decree and declare, the Lord brought you out here. The graces you have received remain with you. And the demonic spirits that have troubled you, hear the word of the Lord. I command those influences to live your life forever. Never to return again. In Jesus' name. So those who are under the anointing in front and they can, please let them walk victoriously back to their seats. Hallelujah. Godia, did I prophesy? Have I spoken about them? I want to pray for you. Behold the glory of the Lord. Behold the lion and the lamb. Behold the glory of the Lord. Hallelujah. I cancel this obituary I'm seeing. I'm seeing that this week, I don't know if the person is here, but I'm seeing a car accident, a car and a tree. This is, and the car is ramping to a tree and everybody in the vehicle, whole family with all the children. In the name of Jesus, I cry unto the God of all grace. We cancel it now. It's always a demonic thing. Always a demonic thing. We cancel it now. Oh, we exert dominion over this vision. We cancel this accident now. We cancel this accident now. I declare the covering of the blood upon your head. You and your children will not die by accident. In the name of Jesus Christ. I pray for you. There's a woman here. You are a teacher. Teacher in a secondary school. Teacher in a secondary school. I want to pray for you. Because I'm seeing God wants to do something. I'm seeing at least four children. You're a woman. You're a teacher. You teach. That's what you do. In a secondary school. Um, I pray for you. Please place your hand. I want to rebuke. There's something... Anything that is growing in your stomach, whether as fibroid or whatever it is, in the name that is above all names, I decree and declare now, let that demonic thing die. You had a dream, and in that dream you saw a diagnosis, and it was cancer. I'm not saying you have cancer. You had a dream. Please, if there's such a person here, I want you to come out. Come. How do I know what dream you had? Come. You had a dream. It was a diagnosis in that dream. And it was cancer. 
Do you know? Please look up. I don't mean to scare you. It's a miracle service. I remember back then in Zaria, that was the first time I saw that vision. I'm not saying if you have cancer, I'm going to pray for the sick. I've not prayed for the sick yet. There's a reason why I'm doing what I'm doing. I remember praying for a woman many years ago. And this woman said someone came to her in a dream holding a syringe and saying this is HIV, uh, uh, HIV virus injected her in the dream. She woke up physically and started having symptoms of HIV. And then the trouble is that it was not only her. It started spreading to the... You can imagine a family. Nothing at all that should bring HIV. And yet all of them like that, HIV. This work of ministry is like medicine. You will see a lot of things. A lot of things. But the Bible says, thanks be to God. I pray for all of you. Any planting of Satan. Huh? I will pray for the ones who I just mentioned now with the case for cancer. But in the name of Jesus, I'm praying for you, Godia. In the name of Jesus. Between now and August, for one of you, one of you, between now and August, God is telling me that what he will do in your life will bring you rest. Because this has been your prayer. Rest. And one of the issues is marriage. Rest. It will, it will happen so fast it will surprise you. In the name of Jesus Christ. It will happen so fast it will surprise you. In the name of Jesus. And for anything that the devil has planted, help that lady, in your stomach, fibroids or whatever growths, I curse it right now. It stops growing and it dies permanently. Help that lady. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus. A dream. Was it not through a dream Solomon received wisdom? Dreams are vehicles. They can transfer nonsense and they can transfer grace. A dream is also a portal in the spirit. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for you. I know some of you here didn't really have a dream. You just came up, but no problem. The mercy of God, but hallelujah. Obedience sometimes when you want to receive from God, just, just obey. Amen. But let's pray. God is a merciful God. Father, I decree and declare, anyone carrying anything in their body now that came from a dream realm and is waiting quietly to manifest as cancer, waiting, you are, you are beginning to see symptoms, pain, weakness, growth that looks like appendicitis, but it's not appendicitis in the name of Jesus. Because for someone, I, I'm, I'm, I don't want you to, to I'm seeing it looks like almost like an ovarian cyst but it's not it's not a cyst is is growing to become something that is cancerous in the name of jesus we cry unto the god of heaven let it stop growing now and die from this body let it stop growing now and die from this body let it stop growing now and die from this body i say it again let it stop growing now and die from this body in the name of Jesus. I may not have the liberty to describe what I'm seeing. You're a lady. But you need help. This one, what you need is both prayer and medical attention. Please listen to me now. What you need because there's, there's wisdom in dealing with things. Because with what the Lord is revealing to me, this is something that is a reproductory problem. You may need to meet the medical uh, uh, people maybe immediately to help you because I'm going to pray for you but in all honesty you also need to be attended to medically because I'm seeing that this has is not something that is good and let me use this opportunity and challenge believers we are people of faith but take responsibility over your health are we together there is nothing wrong and it is not lack of spirituality when you find yourself maybe there's some pain there's some boil there's some growth there's some, you know, whatever it is. And sometimes people do not want to look like they are not believing God. So they don't take medical steps. There is nothing wrong. I do not believe there's anything wrong. Are we together? Most challenges can be managed at the stage of infancy. At least medicine has been that advanced. And while you are trusting God to step in, there are some things that only medicine would deal with because... The condition of this lady is not something to say in public. 
it's not safe it's not wise even but let me advise you don't feel bad you can go to the medical stand and you can talk with the doctors they are trained and they will help you and recommend a solution for you now otherwise you're going to destroy your organs in the name of Jesus Christ the power of God comes to give us wisdom are we learning now so that don't be careless while you are trusting God for a miracle it's important to take personal responsibility personal responsibility I'm about to pray for the sick but I'm seeing someone I need to pray for you uh, I'm not a doctor I don't know how many variations of diabetes but you have sugar diabetes sugar diabetes and if I don't pray for you this thing has produced a lot of internal injuries I want to pray for that person diabetes I don't know whether it's a young person elderly person I don't mean to embarrass you but I'm having a very strong prompting within my heart to pray for people with diabetes so even if you don't have the courage to come out no problem when I begin to pray for people open up your heart to receive but diabetes we need to pray that why is she here the lady the teacher look at me you are a teacher where private school teacher secondary primary school teacher a private school teacher secondary teacher are you married how many children do you have I have four one gone one is gone these are teachers okay diabetes we're a family we're a family so once you can stand in well I will say you can stand in for someone who have too many people come out if you're standing for someone just remain on your seat and connect by faith so that we have people who are standing in for themselves just bring mama gently here as we pray that devil out of her body look at me my dear you're a teacher too in the name of Jesus Christ I want to pray for you um yes you just put them one side I decree and declare by the power that raised Christ from the dead ah, I'm praying here but what I'm seeing has nothing to even do with the spirit of death look at me this lady wearing look at me I want where are you from State. I need to rebuke a spirit there's a dangerous spirit of death hovering around your life I stretch my hands and I declare in the name that is above all names the sound of death will not be heard in your family again I curse that spirit right now and I declare be delivered now if you have diabetes come out oh let me pray for you when God speaks it's because there's an anointing on it there's an anointing on it fathers mothers if you are not sure don't just come out for a medical condition remember Gehazi don't come out for a condition you don't know anything about so please make if you are yet to diagnose it just come I need to pray these young people are they on their own huh do they understand what I said find out please no, no, I know. I'm talking about a, a little one. Say, you, you diag diagnosed with diabetes? Two of them? Okay, I can see it. There will be mighty testimonies. I'm not a doctor, but I've seen people die from this satanic thing. It's a silent killer. Madam, the anointing is on you. This woman, I decree and declare right now. Huh? Let, let that demonic thing you see most of it is demonic I'm telling you this I lay my hands upon you by faith every spirit planting diabetes that in spite of treatment in spite of the drugs it does not seem to give way help help that woman I command right now be loose from that demonic thing be loose from it now be loose from it now be loose from it now, from it now. every internal injury that has refused to heal or physical injury that has refused to heal traceable to diabetes in the name of Jesus I stretch my hands help that woman let the power of God rest upon you now you shall not die shout amen you shall not die if it has killed someone within your family in the name of Jesus I declare minus you minus you therefore from the crown of your head to the soles of your feet diabetes be healed now diabetes be healed now diabetes be healed now
in the name of Jesus Christ. Please return to your seat rejoicing. God bless you. Thank you. Return to your seat rejoicing. God bless you. God bless you. You know, while we were having the Sound of Revival conference, I made a call. I was, I think that was in US. I was so humbled. I made a call for those who needed to stand in having their children suffering from mental health or autism. I could not believe the number of people who came out. Now, I, I, I'm, not, I'm not speaking professionally. I don't know what is responsible for this mental health damage and this autism, but I feel led in my spirit to just do this. Now, please listen. If you have a child, you don't necessarily need to come with a child, but if you, you, are, you are standing in trusting God for your child or someone, mental health or autism, please, very quickly, we have one minute. Come and stand here. I want to speak over your life. Mental health. Damage, mental health damage or autism. An autistic child. Let's all pray. Let's all pray while they come. It, it doesn't have to be your child. I hear me, if you don't have children yet, connect and pray that as I'm praying for them, I'm sowing a seed. Some of those children were born normal. The devil just attacks them to plague them with autism. But thou, O oh Lord, art a shield for me. My glory, you lift my head. But thou, O oh Lord, art a shield for me. My glory, the lifter up of my head. But thou, O oh Lord, art a shield for me. A shield for me, you're my glory, the lifter up of my head. Hallelujah. Listen, whether you are standing for your own child, let me say this before we pray, and this is particularly to those following online. I want to salute every father and every mother globally managing an autistic child. I want to salute you from the depth of my heart. I have watched the discomfort firsthand that managing autistic children, there are people who had to cancel their jobs completely. Those, some had to relocate to other nations. I remember once meeting a lovely man, a lovely family I visited years ago in London. Lovely people, but they had this child with an aggressive dimension of autism. Like aggressive. If you ever go to bed and leave that child, you may wake up with the house on fire. Are we together? So when we pray for people like this, it's an act of responsibility. Because I tell you, this autism thing is a satanic thing from the pit of hell. Can tie down any destiny. You know, sometimes we have people here after service. I have the honor of praying for some of these people. And you can see a grown young man. The mother cannot live her life again. She suffered to give birth to him and she will still not rest. You're my glory, the lifter up of my head. You're my glory, the lifter up of my head. How about the mental health problem? Intelligent people who should be working. I know one who lacerates himself with um, a knife or objects like this you see that because of anger and frustration and some of them in that frustration they go online and then they start connecting with with extra biblical spiritual things for solution they are introduced to all kinds of satanic things technology for you you will see testimonies from this prayer when, when God speaks, let me tell you, my dear people, if you have an autistic child, take your mind away and look unto Jesus. Release your faith. Don't say, I prayed before. And if you are following online, perhaps you have an autistic child, you can bring the child forward and connect. 
I'm about to pray for the sick, but it was just put in my heart. Look how many people standing either for their own children or some other people they love. Let's stretch our hands as a family over these ones. Go ahead. Stretch your hands. If God has given you children who are healthy and normal always, thank him, but sow that seed to another family. Lord, visit this family. Wipe their tears. Not to talk of families that have multiple children with autistic conditions. Shalika paroska diya tabalanda katosi bata. Koinonia connect by faith. A miracle is about to happen right now. Pray. Lord, deliver these families. Deliver these children. Give their parents rest. For God's sake, give their parents rest. In Jesus' name I pray. I want to rebuke the spirit that is back of that autistic condition and that demonic condition. Father, I'm praying right now for all the precious families in front. Some of them are parents standing for their children. Some of them are siblings standing for their other siblings. Some of them are loved ones just standing for neighbors and friends. I'm praying for you in the name of Jesus. The spirit that is back of any autistic condition or any mental health condition right now i speak to you here at this miracle service leave god's people now leave god's people now let there be healing for our children now it doesn't matter how long they've carried it i pray that the power of god will rest upon them that those children will sleep and wake up normally those who are not able to talk some of them that soon after this prayer they will begin to talk and speak coherently in the name of Jesus Christ and if there is any pattern of it in your bloodline as you are standing here we cancel it now we cancel it now in Jesus name we pray please return back rejoicing please return back rejoicing hallelujah please return back rejoicing I hope you are not tired of receiving I want to pray a very special prayer right now and I want you to listen before you come out it is not something I would usually do I want you to listen before you come out you come from a family where there seems to be a cause upon marriages marital problems either nobody gets married or they never stay if you understand what i just said i want to pray for you if you will see people beautiful ladies handsome guys responsible but it's like nobody you see i'm only acting as the spirit of god is i'm not saying if you want to marry that's not the question listen to instructions if you want to marry, God will release that grace and call forth your spouse. But I'm talking of families. You know that this is a satanic thing. Please come out. You're my glory, the lifter up of my head. You're my glory, the lifter up of my head. You are my glory, the lifter up of my head. You are my glory. The lifter up of my head. You are my glory. You are my glory. The lifter up of my head. You are my glory. The lifter up of my head. You are my glory. You are my glory. The lifter up of my head. No, look up please I even hear that there are families where they tell them that if it is to marry properly and have children now please don't feel bad if maybe you've had a child and you're not yet married or you're a single mom don't worry we're a family of love but I need to say this I hear that there are families with all due respect where they even tell ladies you better go and find a man who will get you pregnant so that you can trap the person and have a husband 
let me tell you this with all due respect it's not a kingdom's way don't believe in that nonsense are we together you can with dignity of kingdom integrity marry properly to a good man a good woman and just because it happened to great grandfather and father it is your responsibility to fight it and say it dies from me this negative pattern are we together now so i'm about to pray fire is going to rest on many of you because you may not know what is responsible beautiful lady handsome guy you love jesus someone comes to meet you and say i want to see your your parents and something just happens like this but if you agree to go and have a child or you agree to go and bow to Baal, then it looks like it works the devil is a liar god is visiting situations tonight because you see let me tell you for as long as families remain dysfunctional there is a generation that will pay that price now i say this with all due respect but for as long as there is progressive dysfunction in homes eventually a generation there will be a threshold and a generation will pay that price so god is stepping in now to show mercy and i'm glad that some of you are standing do you know what it means as you are standing i told myself as a person i said everything that came from generations past maritally that is not of god i told myself it ends with me that is a covenant i made with my destiny are we together now if you, you did nobody chose where he came from but what you do with the realities before you now is your responsibility if you give excuses and say one day go better i assure you nothing will change but the day you get angry he said the breaker is gone forth you can get angry and say from whatever happened children before marriage okay thank god for those who went before me but you make up your mind that from you all it is going to end once and for all who is ready to make that decision i pray for you some of you is that parents who were not believers in a bid to go and search for solution search for children they fraternize with spirits they went to rivers waters and entered into covenants out of desperation give us children and we'll return them back to you and some of you are victims of these things right now others parents were sincere maybe they had not met jesus christ they went to native doctors and they gave conditions they did not understand by the blood of the eternal covenant any altar here tying down marriages by fire from heaven be delivered now be delivered now be delivered now be delivered now be delivered now, be delivered now. hear me every agreement between your family past and the devil that everyone from this family must worship the devil or worship some shrine you may call it any name whether you call it aleku whether you call it whatever it is i stand here by the voice of prophecy i cancel every agreement i cancel every agreement from plateau state to benue state to kogi state to the east to the west every agreement with the waters agreement with the sea agreement with spirit i cancel it now i cancel it now my dear sister every veil on your face that as people look at you in the realm of the spirit they are seeing something else by the power that raised christ from the dead if you have the faith to believe this prayer i tear that veil right now 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 now let me say this let me say this please listen to me 
Gentlemen, I'm going to pray a very special prayer for you now. It's a prayer that I pray for myself. And when it's time to pray, everybody can receive. But the men, I want you to receive it. The spirit of a servant and a beggar. There are families that have that covenant. The only way they live is by being beggars. If you like, go and do a PhD anywhere around the world. It is the women that feed the men. No matter how hard working they are. Let me tell you, it's a cause from hell. Things can happen temporarily. I understand. But where it becomes the norm, 30 years into marriage, the house was built by the wife. The car was bought by the wife. The only thing the man is doing is just to live there. It is against divine order. He said, after you have suffered for a while, that the God of all grace will establish you, settle you, everyone here that which has fought quality marriages in your family this miracle service you will not forget it in a hurry in the name of Jesus Christ I place an anointing on you the anointing that came on Rebecca that out of the many ladies who were at the water side when the servant of Abraham saw her, he knew that this is the wife for Isaac. Let that grace rest on you. And every gentleman here, whether you are standing for yourself, your siblings or your children, in the name of Jesus, the grace for your hand to be strengthened so that you can move to another season of your life. I decree and declare, let that grace rest on you. In Jesus name please return to your seat rejoicing let's celebrate them return to your seat rejoicing gentlemen lend me your attention now I want to talk to you I will never raise a people who are only spiritually vibrant and then remain economically incapacitated it is a curse from the pit of hell quote me anywhere are we together the inability to provide for your family and to live a life of dignity and honor. This is something that you have to fight and fight and fight again. Please make sure you help the people so that nobody is hurt. Hallelujah. Now look up please. Brothers, I'm praying for everyone, but I'm praying for you. You may not know the implication of this prayer. But there are many parents today in their 70s and 80s. They are still feeding their children till today. Mama is using her retirement to feed 8, 10, 15 children. It ought not to be so. And it's not like the gentlemen are lazy. I don't know why God is moving in this direction today. But I believe that God is insisting that the glory of God must be announced in your life. Are we together? Yes. Do you know one of the reasons why people are getting into Yahoo and uh, cultism uh, and money ritual? I will tell you because everybody wants to make progress. And when people are pressed like this, they only honor what is consistent with their convictions. So when the gentleman wants to make ends meet, it is not necessarily out of desperation or wanting money. Some just want a decent life. But since it is not there, they watch a friend who was once a beggar and in one month or two months for going to kill somebody or doing something now has a car now has a house no matter what you say there are people who will be desperate enough and say show me even if it's to sacrifice my mother i will sacrifice her so on one hand we don't just tell people stop money ritual stop sin stop this you have to show people the way if you don't show them the way, you will be talking nonsense on stage. They will, people are desperate. They will follow the direction of salvation or a semblance of it. I want to pray for every gentleman here. I confess to you that being established with the dignity of kingdom integrity outside the help of God is almost difficult for many men in our generation today. To get a house of your own without stealing, without killing, without destroying, without bribery 
if God does not help you, you will be wasting your time. There are people who have finished school 20 years, 25 years. They've not had the first job. When are they going to, how much is one block? How much is one cement? When are you going to build a house for yourself? Talk less, help others. That's where grace comes. And I want to pray for you. I want you to receive it. God is a helper. You're the lifter of men. The lifter of men. I believe that with all my heart. Father, I pray for everyone here, but particularly the gentlemen. I decree and declare everyone who is genuinely part of this grace by the power that raised Christ from the dead. Ali Sani Makaparakatos. Lepre Ketebeka Badakatobarikata. Whether you are here on ground, outside, connecting across the globe, I pray for you. It would do you like a dream the way God will establish you. I say it from the depth of my heart. It will be as if you are dreaming how my God will lift you. God will cause productivity to be your second name. God will raise strategic relationships as a leverage for you. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Lay your hands where you are trusting God for a miracle. Lay your hands now. A healing miracle. Please lay your hands very quickly. A breast lump, lay your hands there. Heart condition, lay your hands there. Headache, lay your hands there. Leg pain, lay your hands there. If it's a blood disease, lay your hands on your heart as a point of contact. Please, let's do that quickly and by faith. Remember my teaching? Now is the time to release your faith. Father, in the name of Jesus, your people have come and many have come to be healed. We've come to receive all kinds and all variety of miracles, but many have come to be healed. In the name that is above all names, I decree and I declare right now over someone who has been plagued by sickness, plagued by infirmity, in the name of Jesus, the spirit that is back of that condition, I come against you now. Amen. Koinonia shout a believing amen. amen. The spirit that is back of that infirmity be arrested now in the name of Jesus. Now I declare be healed. Be healed. Be healed. Your blood be cleansed. Bone conditions be healed. HIV be healed. Cancer disappear. Lumps and growths across various parts of your body. They come under arrest now. You couldn't walk. You came here aided or you know you could not walk I declare strength to your limbs now you came here unable to see begin to see now unable to hear begin to hear now you couldn't move any part of your body your neck your ankles your arms in the name of Jesus let life surge to those parts of your body by the power of the Holy Ghost. I decree and declare. Peptic ulcers. Be healed. Pile. Be healed. There's someone you have like a boil. Inside your armpit. Severe discomfort. Be healed now. There's someone. Don't be embarrassed. But I'm saying this. You have. And I've seen this many times. You have what they call mouth odor. It's, it's a very pungent smell. You know about this and it's affected you. You've done your best. Looks like some cavity problem. In the name of Jesus Christ. Whilst you make the medical efforts to deal with it. I'm praying for you. Let the spirit that is bringing this situation leave you now. 
There's someone you have a problem, you have a problem swallowing. Even when you don't take anything, it looks like you are swallowing something that never goes down. You know, just like some problem with your throat. The Lord is healing you now. In the name of Jesus Christ. The Lord is healing you. There is a child that is a sickler. The Lord is healing that child now. I'm seeing a child whose eyes is quite yellow like it is for sickler's SS. The Lord is healing that child now. In the name of Jesus. Appendicitis be healed now. Liver problems be healed now. Kidney problems be healed now. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Heart palpitations be healed now. I say it again. Heart palpitations be healed now. In the mighty name of Jesus. Your right eye. You are not able to see very well with your right eye. The power of God is touching you right now. In the mighty name of Jesus. There's someone when you sit down, it looks like your bone around the lower back area. There's excruciating pain. I decree and declare after this prayer, you sit down and find out you are fine. In the name of Jesus. Now, whether I mention your case or not, in the name of Jesus and by the power that raised Christ from the dead, I bring you life and healing. High blood pressure be healed. Low blood pressure be healed. High blood pressure be healed. Low blood pressure be healed. I say it again. High blood pressure be healed. Low blood pressure be healed. Severe burning sensation around your chest be healed now. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. Now we're going to pray. I wanted us to pray, my God. I don't know if we'll have the time to take testimonies. There are two prayers the Lord put in my heart and I want us to pray. Okay, let's pray. Even if we don't have the time to testify, we can testify another time. Please stand. Let's pray. Let's pray. Collate the prayer request. Have you submitted your prayer request? Please bring it out. Ushers, let's, let's have it very quickly. Thank you for your patience. I intended for us to close early today. We'll still work with that time. We have to be very, very fast. But there's a prayer that I want us to pray. You can pass your request to the last person, the person by the extreme left or extreme right. That makes it easy for the ushers to pick. Let's do that fast. Um, the ushers need any assistance let's let's do well to provide them the assistance as needed if you need to pen down a few more things over your request please do that very quickly please do that very quickly please do that very quickly hallelujah hallelujah okay the first prayer we're going to pray is concerning the favor of god Please listen. I know you will think that because you are part of a ministry with a grace for favor, it is working in your life. I found out that it is, it's not working in the lives of many people. And the Lord put it in my heart. This was strong while we were in Canada. That on my return, we should take the time, a few minutes to pray. So we are going to pray that grace. How do you know that the favor of God is upon you? Men will show you unusual kindness. They will show you unusual acceptance. They will show you unusual access are you ready to pray shout it say father in the name of jesus let the grace for favor begin to speak in my life open your mouth and pray please pray this would be a major reason why someone came to church tonight a major reason why someone came to church tonight a major reason please pray a major reason why someone came to church tonight Someone pray. A major reason why someone came to church tonight. Favor. A redefiner of possibilities. Favor. The unique edge to business. The unique edge to ministry. The favor of God.
provoked by value, provoked by relationships, provoked through prayer, provoked by the anointing. Go ahead and pray. Let favor rest upon me that if I did not receive anything in tonight's service, let me carry that grace. Let me carry that grace. Someone pray. Let me carry that grace. Let it speak redefining my finances. Let it speak redefining my opportunities. Let it speak redefining my realities. Online, make sure you are praying. Make sure you are praying. Make sure you are praying. There is a grace called favor. It can come on men. The results can be evident. Bringing acceleration to your life. That whilst you serve the purposes of God. You advance with dignity. You make progress with dignity. Favor can redefine your marriage. The favor of God can redefine your family. It is not unmerited. Favor is merited. Favor is programmable. Favor is merited. Favor can be programmable. Sapa laka tebe laka parakata zakatesh. Lebarenta sabrenda kebe lekata. Pastor, declare favor upon your life. Favor upon your ministry. Favor upon your business. Access to kindness. Access to unusual acceptance. In the name of Jesus, unusual kindness, unusual acceptance. Pray favor over your business. In addition to your productivity, you need favor. Pray favor upon your ministry. In addition to your diligence and consecration and love for Jesus, you need favor. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. I want you to pray this final prayer with all your heart. Jesus was teaching us how to pray and he said two things. Number one, he said, deliver us from evil. Deliver us from evil. Is the second prayer I penned down while in Canada, the Lord put in my heart. Many of you do not know the mystery of calamities. Listen to my message, deliverance from calamities. You don't have to be an evil person to be a victim of calamities. Are we together now? Mishaps, misfortune. It says the rod of the wicked shall not rest upon the lot of the righteous. Did you know there are people who walk head on and collide with calamity? Head on. They are looking and you will think they are watching until they collide with calamity. Deliver us from evil. Are you ready to pray? Shout it. Say, Father, I decree and declare that the rod of the wicked will not come near my dwelling. I am delivered from trouble, from pain, from setbacks, from calamity. Go ahead and pray. Please open your mouth and pray. Calamity of any and all sorts. I'm escaped like the bird before the net. The rod of the wicked. Someone pray. The rod of the wicked shall not rest upon the lot of the righteous. The rod of the wicked shall not rest upon the lot of the righteous. The rod of the wicked shall not rest upon the lot of the righteous. The rod of the wicked. The rod of kidnappers. The rod of ambrobas. The rod of evil men. The rod of ill, ill-speaking men. The counsels of Ahithophel. The rod of the wicked. In your place of work, Koinonia pray. The rod of the wicked shall not rest upon the lot of the righteous. In your business endeavor, deliver me from evil. Deliver me from the scourge of the tongue. Deliver me from the ill wishes of wicked men. Deliver me from there that will not rest till they see your tears. Those who have vowed not to rest till they see your pain. Those who have vowed not to rest till they see you defeated. Those who have vowed not to rest. Pray, deliver me from there who are in fraternity with dark spirits, 
looking forward to your downfall looking forward to mishaps happening to you one more minute you are praying stretch that prayer to your children stretch that prayer to your spouse stretch that prayer to the works of your hands oh i escape like the bird before the snare of the fowler In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, there are people who have no business hating you except that they kept companies and they transferred the hatred of antagonists to them and it fell on you. Your boss used to love you until someone who does not like you told your boss to join them in hating you and now you are fighting battles you cannot explain. Let me tell you the truth. It is your responsibility to sanitize your environment and that through prayer. Are we together now? The rod of the wicked shall not rest upon the lot of the righteous. When a gatekeeper speaks evil about you, it can peg your destiny. When a, an evil person gets to the ears of your helper before your arrival, they can bring whispers of, this, of, of demons. And by the time you arrive from their ears, their hearts have been poisoned. When they look at you, they say, I've changed my mind. My intention was to lift you. My intention was to wipe your family. But somebody came and told me, your family is not worth helping. And they recycle seasons of pain. Let me pray for someone. Anyone who has sent a wrong word to the ears of your helper, and without you knowing that your helpers have had things about you that is responsible for the antagonisms I'm praying for you be delivered this night be delivered this night be delivered this night from the scourging tongues of men be delivered this night in the name of Jesus please stretch your hands to this prayer request Stretch your hands and begin to speak as an act of faith. We don't do this as a ritual. No. If God does, we don't have to do it in a miracle service. No. It is always because we have a release by the Spirit of God. It is no ritual at all. This is God visiting his people. If you are bringing a request, please bring it quickly. Everyone, you are praying. Father, answer me by the power of the Holy Spirit. You are not just a prayer hearing God. You are a prayer answering God. Let me not have to repeat these things I've written again. Satisfy me early with your mercy. Someone is praying. Satisfy me early. Take a minute to pray. You are investing. You wrote for your husband. You wrote for your wife. Now pray for them. You wrote for your children. Now pray for them. You came to church receiving, believing for someone else. Pray for them. In the name of Jesus Christ, Shali Bara Sopranda Pray for them. Pray for them. Father, you are a prayer answering God. I lay my hands over this request. Answer your people. Give them testimonies. Let it come to pass. Let it come to pass. Let it come to pass that you have shown them faithfulness. Let it come to pass that you have shown them mercy. Let it come to pass that you have turned their captivities. Let it come to pass in the name of Jesus that the doors have been opened. Let it come to pass and upgrade to the quality of their lives. Let it come to pass. Visit them. Impossible miracles in the name of Jesus. For in Jesus' name we pray. For in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Father, I lift my hands bowing my knees before your people in the name of Jesus I declare over every request here may it come to pass that the answers be delivered to your people speedily may it come to pass that the sickness is finally gone may it come to pass that the job has arrived 
May it come to pass that the baby has finally arrived. May it come to pass that the visa finally came out. May it come to pass that the relocation worked. May it come to pass that the promotion happened. May it come to pass that the cancer is gone. May it come to pass that you now own your home. May it come to pass that Abuja has opened up for you. Whatever is consistent with God's desire as represented in this request, I declare speedy answers. The prophetic word for you over this, this request is that it will come to pass. In Jesus' name we pray. Lift your hands to receive the blessing. I pray for you. In the name that is above all names, doors open. Koinonia receive it, doors open. Every nation that has rejected you, not after this service, I decree and declare, let the gates be open for you. I say it again, every nation that has rejected you, not after this service, in the name of Jesus, let the gates be open for you. Whatever has made it difficult for you to meet your helper, by prophecy, I shorten the distance between you and your helper. By prophecy, I shorten the distance between you and your helper. I shorten the distance between you and your helper. In the name of Jesus Christ. I decree and declare, everyone who forgot you, may they remember you tonight. Not tomorrow, may they remember you tonight. May they remember you for good. May they remember you for kindness. May they remember you for promotion. May they remember you for lifting. May they remember you for help. May they be instruments of restoration. In the name of Jesus. Anyone who has said, where is your God? May this week be their answer. From Monday to Sunday, let there be testimonies that show where your God is. In the name of Jesus. And any covenant with hell, with the grave, with the spirit of death, we sever that covenant now. Let me pray for a man of God who is in ministry. May your hands be strengthened. That this remaining part of the year, you will wax valiant. You will do ministry with power. You will bring great glory to the name of the Lord. Let me pray for a family here. In spite of what may be happening around the nation, I pray for you. May a mark of exemption land on your head. A mark of exemption, let it rest on your head. In the name of Jesus. If you must travel, no accidents. If you are in the air, no plane crash. I decree and declare you must travel. Let the angels go before you, clearing out wicked men from the road. In the name of Jesus, I pray for your children. You will not hear bad news. You will not hear they've joined occult groups. You will not hear they are destroying the destiny of others. In the name of Jesus, your portion in this Abuja, let it be delivered to you. Your portion in Nigeria, let it be delivered to you. Your portion across the globe, let it be delivered to you. In the name of Jesus, I prophesy no more delay. No more delay. For your job, no more delay. For your papers, no more delay. For your children, no more delay. Let me pray over your spiritual life. Fresh fire on your prayer altar. Shout amen. Fresh fire on your prayer altar. You are loving Jesus with all your heart. Serving Jesus with all your heart. I declare the grace for the study of the word. Let it rest upon you. I separate you from wicked people. I separate you from evil people. In the name of Jesus, you will not beg for food to eat. Let strangers be sent by God to help you. In the name of Jesus, in your place of work, good news this week. I say it again, in your place of work, good news this week. In your business, enjoy good news this week. Whatever you are waiting for, it arrives speedily. In the name of Jesus. Wave your hands to Jesus and give him praise for tonight. Thank you. Thank you, Heavenly Father. 
Thank you, Heavenly Father. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Thank you, Heavenly Father. For someone, difficulty has come to an end. You have enjoyed progress, but with difficulty. Now step into the realm of ease. Over your finances, may God give you the treasures of darkness and the hidden riches of secret places. Oh, you will find treasures this week. Your eyes will see where others do not see. In the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Very quickly, please allow me to make the altar call as we wrap up the service. Thank you for your patience. It is always a joy and delight to lead somebody to Jesus. Whoever you are, when the master calls, it is because he loves you. When the master calls, it is because he wants to end negative seasons over your life. It is for your sake that we're taking out a minute or two. Wherever you are, you're saying, Apostle, please do not wrap up this miracle service for July. Without giving me an opportunity, I want to surrender everything to Jesus. I want to receive his life. Wherever you are, or you are saying, Apostle, I want to rededicate my life. Please carry your bags, your Bibles, whatever you came to church with. We're going to count one to five as we appreciate them. Please leave your seat very quickly and come and stand before me. God bless you. Many are already coming. Many are already coming. Join them. You know you need to be here. Jesus is calling you. Go ahead. One. Koinonia, let's celebrate them as they come. This is unto Jesus. Two. God bless you, ma'am. God bless you, sir. Young, old, male, female, come. Three. Please, if they are coming from outside, clear the way for them very quickly. All the overflows, take a minute to walk to your LED screen. Let's do that as fast as you can. Four. When I count five, I begin my prayer. Come. God bless you. You're joining them. Please make that fast. Your bags, your Bibles, everything you came to church with. Join them very quickly. Final count, five. Hallelujah. Thank you so much, my dear brothers and sisters. It is a delight for me and for us as a family to lead you in this most important prayer. You've heard me say this is the most important decision any man can make on this side of God's kingdom. Hallelujah. The Bible says as many who will come to him, he will in no wise cast away. May I please request that you lift your right hand as a sign of surrender to Jesus high above your head. You say this after me as loud and clear as you can. Say, Lord Jesus, I love you with all my heart. I believe that you died for my sin. I believe that you rose again for my justification. Right now, I receive Jesus and your life into my heart. I declare that I'm a child of God. The power of sin, Satan, hell, and the grave is broken over my life. I go forward ever and backward never. Amen. Keep your hands lifted. Father, we love you and we thank you. Thank you for these precious ones you have brought. I pray in the name of Jesus upon the integrity of your word and based on their confession, we call them bona fide recipients of your life. And I decree and declare that they are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus going from glory to glory, grace to grace. I decree and declare that your Christian experience will go from glory to glory. You won't go up today and down tomorrow. May the Lord protect and preserve you in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Please do well to follow my right. That will be your left. There are counselors waving the placard for you to see. They'll have a word with you and a prayer with you very briefly and you're back to your seat. Let's honor them as they go. Let's honor them as they go. Hallelujah. Amen. Just two quick announcements. Number one, thank you so very much for um, your patience and prayer all through the time of our absence. And then number two, I have to do this my apologies for not having the best viewing experience. I, I got word that something happened to the LED. This is particularly for those of us who are here. I owe it to take responsibility and apologize. I'm sure that everything will be sorted. We're a ministry of excellence. And so my apologies for having this challenge that we experienced today. I'm sure it affected the viewing experience for many people. I'm sure that um, there are measures put on ground to work on it and to see that these kinds of things are minimized, if not completely avoided. So thank you for your patience and your understanding. The Lord bless you. And then second is um, to those who have been crying out to be part of the workforce. Now periodically, 
we open up doors for people. We have several departments, at least 11 within the ministry. And so for those of you who desire to be part of any department, you just be patient. The departments will open up doors. And when they do open up doors, you can always um, apply. And then uh, for the specialized departments, you would need to go through a little screening process. But for most departments, they are open to receive. But then at least everyone can be part of our prayers, whether you are the prayer department or not. They meet on Tuesdays and you can go there just to fuel your spiritual life at the Daughters of Abraham or other auditorium there. So make sure you are part of it. You feel that your spiritual life is going down. You can pay a visit one of the Tuesdays, stretch yourself, build capacity in the spirit uh, for as long as it takes to keep you stable. But your stability is our concern and we pray that God will continually help you. And you are here, you are not filled with the Holy Ghost, with the evidence of praying in tongues and you so desire, make it a date with them on Tuesday and there are people who will be glad to pray for you, minister the baptism. The Lord bless you, the Lord increase you. For any and all inquiry, I may say this, we focus sometimes on the people outside of this ground, but uh, I know that some of you sometimes need information. We have a PR desk and it answers to every and any information from the PR desk. They will lead you to the appropriate departments if need be. Whether it is to see me, whether it's to um, whatever it is, you will be directed. So do well to maximize our public relations department. They attend to any and all correspondences. Uh, take advantage of their presence. That is the wisest way so that you don't become a victim of doing something wrong. I know there are issues we complain sometimes that the protocol or the security, you can always, once you meet the PR, they can direct you appropriately. There are appropriate channels of doing everything, prayers or whatever. So let's avoid backdoor approaches that eventually backfire. There's an organized system. We continue to improve on the system. And so my apologies also for, you know, those who have had issues with our protocol department, our security department, who are committed to securing everyone and serving you with excellence. And if and when we fall short, please forgive us. By God's grace, we continue to build our structure and our administrative architecture to make sure that everyone is served with excellence. And then let me encourage, please be patient, be patient. Some of us come and we cause a lot of trouble. Don't do that. We're people of love, but we must subscribe to order. Are we together? Yes, so please let's not have people coming to fight everybody. I must see apostle or this and that. Let's be people of order. And um, I continue to encourage the protocol department. We've gotten, I'm saying this, this is, this is a, a bit of housekeeping before we pray. I need to address this. It's come to my table, issues of people having, uh, you know, concerns with the way and the manner they've been treated by the protocol department or the security department and I've looked at it and for many there have been valid reasons to tender an apology and they've not acted in the way that should be and this is leadership now I must apologize to the many who may have had issues with protocol and security department just accept it in good faith that they are working for the greater good of the house will continue to train and improve them but on your own part please do well to not find offense work within the allowance that is given but for starters, if you need any information about the ministry, how to navigate your way officially, and that also includes our international guests. Sorry, I'm taking a minute to do this. All international guests, you are at liberty to come on your own. Any service is your service. But for any special arrangements, please route through the public relations department. They have the authorization to be able to prepare, you know, your stay to make it the most they can advise you appropriately so that you don't come in through a way that ends up leaving you disappointed. Are we clear on that? So please, my apologies for any and everyone who's had issues in the past or present with the protocol department or the security department. We'll continue to build ourselves and improve on our approach to make sure everyone is served with excellence. But on your own part, please do forbear and work within whatever it is that they tell you to do. God bless you. Please, let's rise up as we end the service. The Lord bless you in Jesus' name. Let his hand be strong upon you. You go from glory to glory. Let your week beginning be a week of miracles, a week of testimonies. In Jesus' name we pray.
Together, let's share the grace in fellowship, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit. Rest and abide with us now and forever. Amen. Surely, God's goodness and mercies follow us all the days of our lives as we dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. God bless you. Greet someone and then see you on Sunday. Thank you for staying to the end of this message. I know you have been blessed powerfully by this message. I know you have been blessed. And I also want you to bless others by sharing this message with others also. In that way, you are also doing the work of an evangelist. So stay tuned on this channel. And also, when you subscribe, turn on the notification bell so that each time we release a content, you'll be notified and so that you don't miss out on any of our content. So God bless you and we hope that we see you next time. But keep in mind that Jesus is alive and your life is to let, you have to use the life, the opportunity, opportunity that God has given to you to, to tell someone about Jesus. Because you never can tell. When you sow that seed of faith, you're only just to sow the seed and the Holy Spirit will take it up from there. So let someone know about Jesus. You don't have power to convert someone. You don't have power to convict someone. But when you sow that seed, the Holy Spirit will now breathe upon that seed and the person will be convicted and the person will give life or her life to Jesus.